Hey guys, it's Carl Brown for GuitarLessons365.com. Got another tribute to Chris Cornell today. We're going to take a look at Fell on Black Days. Now this is in standard tuning. Um, it's got some uh, tricky little licks in it as well. And there's uh, some kind of guitar doubling going on here there. So I'll have to show you what's going on both of those uh, parts as well. So let's start here. We're going to start with the uh, main riff. Be sure if you like this video, please subscribe. And um, I'm doing, you know, four or five videos a week here. So uh, it's plenty to see. So let's start with this main riff. Very unique little riff there. So what's going on? We have the low E open and the seventh fret on the A and the ninth fret on the D. Then you're just gonna move the chord over to, after you hit that, over to the B power chord here, which is the seventh fret on the uh, low E string, ninth fret on the uh, A string. And when you pick that, kind of slightly pull them towards the floor. And release, and then, then we have the, um, the seventh fret there on the A and the D together. Then, then the same strings open. And then we go to the eighth fret there on the low E, seventh fret on the A. And basically this chord, the important part here is to let the bottom of your index finger mute the D string. And you want basically the G string ring, ringing with it most of the time. And at the end when they strum across, they usually strum across to the open B as well. So we have this all together really slow. Now at the beginning of the song, you'll hear a little guitar lick um, done by Kim Thayle, which is just uh, a pre-bend of the seventh fret on the G string to hold that, and then release that. All right, so so that makes up the verse. Alright, now we have a little pre-chorus riff, or you can call it like a transition riff. It's pretty quick, and there's two definitive guitar parts. Chris Cornell's part looks like this. That's transitioning to the chorus. So I'll show you that real quick. So that starts with that same power chord, low E open, 7th fret on the A, ninth fret on the D down, up, down, and then over to the power chord here on the 7th fret, the low E string, back to the E power chord, so like this, back to the B power chord, slide down to the A power chord, so two frets down to the 5th the, uh, fret there, hit that a couple times, then over to the D power chord off of the A string. So that's the fifth fret off the A string power chord. And then that same ending chord. He hits it and then he strums across it. Remember, the D string is muted, and it's, but you have the open B and the open G in there. So I have this. Now Kim Thayle is going to be doing this. So he'll join him at the end, but he starts with these octaves where he's muting all the strings around it. So he's basically playing the seventh fret and muting the A string, uh, playing the seventh fret on the low E, this B note, muting the A string, then playing the ninth fret on the D string while muting the G string and having the B open B ring with it. So you have three Bs there, and that's all you hear. And then you come to down to the A octave here. This time you're just going to hear the note on the A, uh, the low E string and the uh, D string. And then the ending is the same. So this. So when you put those together, those riffs sound from with you know, Chris Cornell's. So you're going to see that riff a little bit later from Chris Cornell too. Uh, during the solo. All right, so from there we go back to the chorus, which is the same as the verse. All 
All right, now we have the next new part is the bridge, uh, which is very similar to the chorus. It, it comes in at the two minute and two second mark. And it looks like, it's like when he's doing that, how will I know that? So we just basically uh, start with this, that power chord the, uh, off the fifth fret of the A string twice, and then back to that E power chord and can, kind of playing the normal chorus rip. Or a verse. When you go there, after you're repeating it twice, then you go back to that. Now we have a little musical interlude um, that they play. Um, this is a little bit more tricky. It happens at the uh, 2 minute and 19 second mark. Sounds like this. back to that main riff. All right, so that starts with the um, octave here off the seventh fret of the uh, low E string and the ninth fret there on the D. Remember the A string is muted in between. Hit that three times. Then move it over to the octave off the seventh fret of the A string. So. Then move that, so you just get the ninth fret on the G. Then 11, just move that octave shape off the 11th. And 12. So it is. All right. Now you're gonna hit the open A string, and then that gives you time to jump over here. So that's just. Um, now you're gonna be play, playing a melody on the G string, and the, every single time you hit the note, you're also gonna hit the open D string with. So we're going to start here, so uh, I'll, just, I'll just show you this melody on the G string. That's a hammering 16 to 17, pull back off to 16, pull off to 14. And then go 16, 17, 19, 17, 16, 14. Now with the open D. more time. So coming from those octaves, so notice I hit that open A string in there. Then you do the same melody again. Now the third time through he changes it up a little bit. All right, so that starts the same way. And he kind of comes back when he gets here. Does that little hammer between 16 and 17. Back to 14, 16, 17, 16. So we have this. Then you start to look kind of normal like we did the first and second time. Except now we just go kind of a longer ending. So from that 19th fret, 16, 17, 14, 12, 11, and slide down to nine. So all together, the whole thing.
then back to the main riff. All right, so let's move on to Kim Thale's solo here. Now, the solo has got a lot of effects, had a big flanger, especially at the beginning of it, and a lot of wah. Uh, so I'm not gonna put all those effects on it, just kinda kinda play through. Uh, once again, he doesn't have a very uh, succinct mix he's playing, so it's very improvised, and it's just kinda based around pretty much one um, B minor uh, scale shape. All right, so that's really the main thing to focus on, and just to kind of, he's just kind of going for it. He's not really trying to play, um, except at the very end, he does kind of has very specific licks. Uh, but the first half of the solo is really effect based, so he's really using the effects more than he is the, the notes on the guitar. So it kind of sounds like this. <laughs> So underneath that, Chris Cornell, just to, just to let you know, he's playing the same little transition riff or pre-chorus riff. All right, but uh, Kim Thayil, what he's doing here is he starts with a lot of flanger across the open three strings, the top three strings. Picking across that, and then he, and the first time you really hear him uh, playing an actual lick there is he's he's kind of uh, hammering seven and nine on the G. Then he up and playing back down to nine seven. And he kind of slides it up. And then he starts his lick that's just based around the B minor pentatonic. So hopefully you know your B minor pentatonic scales. If you know, we have it uh, at Guitar Lessons 365 or just subscribe to this channel. You'll learn it um, pretty quickly. So we have 10 seven on the high E, 10 seven on the B. Uh, nine seven on the G, and nine pretty much just he goes down to the nine on the D. That's as far as he goes down. So very common shape. So what he does, he starts with a bend at the top, and then plays it normal, and then he just kind of just does his thing that he does a lot of solos where he just kind of kind of trills across those notes. So. So well, between 7, 10, 7, 10 on the B, 7 and 9 on the G, down to that 9 on the D string, then back 7, 9 into a bend of the 9th fret on the Gs. Now here he goes, has a little, little bit of a trill here, down to the 9th fret on the D. And here, He's kind of going nine and then hitting the seven on the G string a couple times. He does that like three times in a row. Then he goes into some oblique bends, which is a bend of the ninth fret on the G string, grabbing the tenth fret on the B. Like I said, it's going to be hard to pick all this up because he's it's just really effect laden solo. But we have just. So after a couple of those unison bins, I mean, uh, oblique bins, pull off 9 to 7 on the G, over to 9 on the D, and then go back up. And you make your way back up until you get to the 10th fret on the B string and do a couple of bins there. You gotta just kind of find the spots where he stays in one spot for a second so you can hear it with all its effects. And then he goes to the high E string, 7th fret, Bend of the 10th fret, and then you let that note actually ring for uh, pretty much um, like a, um, a couple of measures. And then he has some very definitive licks that he ends the solo with. So that is just going to be a, it's still based around that pentatonic. Bend and release of the 10th fret on the high E string, pull off the 7. Same thing on the B string. Then back to that same, uh, you're going to do that, those two bends and release again. Then go all the way down to the G strings, bending and release. 
same two notes, and end it there at the ninth fret on the D. All right, so I'm gonna go back to this clean setting here so you can hear. We go back pretty much to the outro chorus at this point. But coming out of the solo, this is uh, about the three minute and 40 some second mark here. We're gonna have, um, he starts right out of the solo when he does this, goes into this outro chorus. Um, there are some guitar um, octaves being played with it. Now, the, it gets the part where he starts repeating the same thing, but first he plays this. And then we get that little bridge riff. And this when he starts doing the same octaves again and again. So these octaves that you're going to hear over the standard chorus riff is starting the octave shape. These are all off the fifth string octave. So second fret there on the A string with its fourth fret there on the G. Remember the D string in the middle is muted. So you just take that shape and I'm going to call it where the first finger is at so you know where to go. Slide up to the seven and then up to 12. So we have this two, seven, ten. I'm sorry, did I say 12? It's the 10 up here. So we have this. Just where your first finger is at. Now repeat that again. All right, from here, we're going to go from 13, 5, and 7. All right, so we have this so far. I said 13 again, didn't I? So it's 11, that's where your first finger's at. Then five and seven. And then we're gonna go back to that 11th fret. This time now seven and 12. So from when the first time you went to that 11th fret, it goes 11, five, seven, then 11, seven, 12. All right, so that takes us right there to the So when he starts hitting that part, um, you know, Chris Cornell is still playing the same, the same riff that we learned before, but over that we have these octaves. So you can keep doing it, you can see it. So you lock in with that, that power chord hit there that we did earlier. And then you jump back to the octave of the second fret again. Seven, 10, then 13, five, 12. Then back to that. And then do the exact same octaves again. Two, seven, 12, 10, 11, five, 12. Now at the very end of the song, we have that same kind of pre-chorus or transition riff that happens. Like... And there's a quick little B minor pentatonic. Kind of just based around that B minor. It's that, like you said, these notes are not kind of, they're not really kind of consequential to the actual song or whatever, but they're, it's all, any of the lead licks he pretty much does are, are really kind of based around that B minor pentatonic scale form. So you can easily find all those notes and they're just, you know, if you really want to get piece it all together exactly like he plays it. All right, so the, really the song itself without even the solos is great. It's got really cool riffs in it. Very interesting how they kind of work together. Um, you know, it's a beautiful song too. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.